Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is going to be manifold leaks. How to find them, how to fix them, and what to watch out for when you're doing this job. So, manifold leaks can be in two locations. It can either be on the exhaust or it can be on the intake. They share one gasket, so it's a pretty common problem. And when they leak on the exhaust, you get exhaust gases floating around the engine bay as well as... Um, just noise. When they have an intake leak, that's where it becomes a much more serious problem. The uh, intake leaks is simply that, air coming into the intake, and basically what happens is it leans out the air mixture so the engine doesn't run properly, so you have to either raise the idle speed or you have to increase the amount of uh, fuel going into the engine to compensate for, for a leak at, at the manifold gasket here. So that was what was going on with this car. The uh, I seem to be getting manifold leakages across the center here, specifically in these corners. Whenever I'd spray a uh, brake cleaner down here, I would, I would see the engine RPMs rise and the fuel goes rich. So that's what we're going to chase after is what causes these problems. And it's a common problem I see on a lot of minis. And it usually has to do with a change in either the manifold or the exhaust uh, system, or both. Um, I've talked about it before where there's a mismatch in parts and dimensions, but that's what's going on here. And so let me zoom into the exhaust manifold so I can show you what's going on. And we'll talk about that first. So normally I would do this job by taking the exhaust headers off of the car. But on this particular car, the entire exhaust system is welded together. So I can't physically remove this. Uh, so in order to get the manifold gasket off, I've had to unbolt the upper engine mount and allow the engine to rock uh, forward in order to get the proper clearance to get the uh, gasket out. And it's still under quite a bit of tension here. So this is not an easy, you know, task, but it is doable if you take your time. Obviously I've removed the intake. Now, one of the key components of getting the gaskets to seal is you gotta make sure you come in here and clean this surface very thoroughly. Um, you just barely see I've already cleaned the intake ports. Um, you gotta be, again, scotch bright. Give it a good clean with some solvents. Make sure you get all the previous gasket off of this surface, as well as the manifold. So that's step number one, is get all that, that clean. But the real reason why we suffer a lot of clamping uh, issues is because of the clamping forces from the bolts. So you either get a set of steel nuts or you get a set of brass nuts fitted to these studs. And the steel ones have higher... Uh, clamping abilities because they're steel. The brass ones will strip out unless you use the really long ones. So um, you might be able to just switch from the, the brass to the steel and improve your clamping forces on here. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is a problem of the thicknesses of the flanges between the intake and the exhaust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the flanges on the exhaust and then I will measure the corresponding flanges on the intake here. This is the flange, and what I'm measuring is the thickness of this from here to the machine surface and then from here to the rough surface. Now, depending on the hardware, you might have a small washer or you might have a giant flat washer. In the case of this car, they had giant flat washer, so we'll talk about that when we get to the, um, the hardware in a minute. But for now, let's just get the exhaust system flanges measured, and then we'll talk about it. So to do this, I'm just going to use my small pocket um, micrometer here, and I'll just measure a couple of them so you can see what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm going to measure the thickness of the machine section first. So you can see that this is approximately 0 0.280 on the dial indicator here to the machine surface. Now, if I go to the rough coarser section, it's 3.4, 3.375. Something like that. So now that I've measured this one, let me move on to this one. Uh, this one is 265 on the flange, 33, 32, on the rough course side. And finally, the last one here, 275 on the machine surface and about 337 on the rough. And I don't need to worry about the outer ones here because it's just a straight bolt and it doesn't have a shared flange. So these ones I never, never, ever worry about their, uh, their thicknesses. So now that we've measured the exhaust, let's go ahead and measure the intake. I've just turned it on end so you can see. 305 
on the machined and uh, 385 on the rough. So that's one. Let's go ahead and measure the inner one here. 305 and 385. So we always need to check the thicknesses on both halves. I've seen these where they're different on one side versus the other. This is 310 and 38. And the last side, this is, yep, about 31 and 395. So here's the numbers in case you missed it. Um, here's the intake, here's the exhaust. So the difference between the exhaust and the center, for instance, it measured 0 0.280 versus a 305 so roughly a 15 thou difference in thickness is there and then up here we got 337 versus 385 so about another 50 thou up here so you can see that depending on where our washer sits there's a different amount of material that it has to span across and that's a problem because when you have a stud that has to you know clamp down so we'll use this bolt for an example so if you're trying to tighten something down and you've got a washer that doesn't sit level, then what happens is that instead of pushing down against the flange, it actually tries to bend the bolt. So your effort in trying to increase the clamping pressure just goes into bending the bolt rather than actually applying force to the head. So what we have to do is we have to choose a surface that we're going to use to clamp onto, and then we need to make sure that those two thicknesses are equal. And the way that we do that is with uh, various grinding, cutting, and, and um, polishing and sanding uh, tools. I'll show you. My favorite one is a carbide cutter because it does a very quick and easy job. But the downside is that because I'm working on this engine in the car with the head in place, I need to block off all the ports. Otherwise, any of the grinding material is going to go into the ports, and we don't want that to happen. So make sure you block off your ports and also wear eye protection and ear protection when doing this job because it's a very nasty, messy, noisy job. Since the intake manifold here is the thicker half, I'm going to modify the intake manifold and leave the exhaust manifold alone. Simply because the intake is easier to modify and again it's the thicker one. But if the exhaust manifold was thicker, then you'd have to modify the exhaust manifold to match the intake. Alternatively, you can always go ahead and modify the washer. So sometimes you can just grind away some of the washer and make a, a stepped washer to fix this problem. It's up to you how you want to do this. But there are multiple ways of solving this problem. So what I've done here to the manifold is I've gone and written the thickness that I'm trying to target to match the exhaust flange. So once I write it, I just do a quick double check, make sure that my numbers match the exhaust flange thicknesses before I go any further because I hate to modify it and then not be accurate. So this one says 3, 2, 1, which is what I wrote there. Um, double checking this one. This one is approximately 3, 3, 3, 5. So I, I miswrote that one. This one here, 3, 1, 5. And this one is a 325. So I just need to rewrite this. This should be a 350, not a 335, as I wrote. Oh, no, wait. It's 335. Yeah. yeah. You want to take measurements in different places just in case these manifolds have a step or a, an angle to them. These things are never really straight. Yeah, 3, 1. Okay. Yeah, so. I'm going to leave the numbers the way they are. That's that's the numbers that I need to get the, the intake manifold to. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, 3 to 1, this thing is at, it's like 3, 9. So I've got to take a considerable amount. i got to take uh, 70 thou off of this edge alone to make it match the exhaust manifold. So here's what I use to modify these manifolds. I use a series of uh, cutting bits, my uh, air socket, ratchet, whatever you want to call it, air cutter. And um, I'll just uh, 
you know, come in here and I'll just slowly cut away the aluminum until I'm about the right desired thickness and then I'll come back here and dress it with a file make it really nice and straight when I'm all done. So I like to just rest the tool on the floor and slide it back and forth as a tool rest and then um, I'll angle it a little bit and I'll pull And once I've done a cut, I'll check my thickness. I don't want to cut too far. So I've done my rough cut. Uh, 321 is our target number. And we are approximately 330-ish over here. And we are approximately 329, 330. You know, it's a rough cut, so it's not going to measure it perfectly. Um, either way, uh, we, once I get to within about 10 thou, I will switch to using uh, hand files to finish this cut. So here I am just finishing off the final thicknesses using a flat file. And again, I'm just making sure that the surface is fairly even across. I'm not worried about it being perfect. It just needs to be within a few thou of the exhaust flange. So, there you go. And if we measure... We were shooting for three, two, one. We are at approximately three, two, four on that spot there. So we're within a few thou of our target right there, three, two, two. Um, it's a little thicker over here, so I'll have to take a little more material off this edge, but we're within a few thou of our target. And there's the finished flange. So now it's time to do the other three. And the second one, we're going for uh, 335. So the process is the same. Just get, get your tool, come in here, grind. I highly recommend resting against a flat surface doing this. It makes it less likely for the tool to kick. And uh, yeah, just keep doing it until you've done all four flanges. So now that we've finished cleaning up these flanges, they're all at the correct uh, thicknesses to match the exhaust flanges. We also need to check that the centering rings don't bottom out in the head. Now, I've gone ahead and measured this one. This one, its depth is approximately 0 0.150. Now, it's a little difficult to measure, but we do need to check to make sure that we're not hitting, um, hitting the head. And in this case of this head, it is, we've got a 1.70 or 1.769, whatever that is. So that means that we've got at least 20 thousandths of clearance between the center locating ring and the head itself, which means that we won't bottom the manifold out against the, uh, the centering rings, which is excellent. If for some reason you measured the thickness and it was too thick, you just need to cut down the appropriate material out of this ring. Um, I actually used a file to just file down a little bit, but you can, you can do whatever you need to do to take out the material because the key is you don't want this bottoming out against the head because what will happen is you'll be tightening against this aluminum but this won't be moving so you'll basically just be stressing out the aluminum in these corners and you could potentially crack the manifold. Another point to make about getting your manifold to seal properly is that these surfaces need to be flat and true. Now I've gone ahead and run this across my flattening stone and you can see they're nice and shiny and they're uh, true across the entire surface. So that means when it gets bolted up, it's a totally flat seal against the uh, gaseous material. So as you can see, I've got the twin carbs all finished up. These will be part of another video. Um, but the key is that the uh, surfaces are nice and clean. Like I said, the head and whatnot is all ready to go. And I've got the new gasket here. So I'll just get it fitted and fire it up and see if we've got any air leaks. Hopefully not. There's a lot of work to get this uh, sorted out. Well, it's running, and it sounds a lot better than it did before. I sprayed a uh, carb cleaner on the manifold, didn't hear any leakage, so I say this job is well done. If you guys thought this video was interesting or helpful, let me know in the comments below. 
And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.